Looks like we're finally getting emulators on our iPhone. Well, kind of. As always with Apple, this is a complex situation. Over the last 17 years, Apple's relationship with games on iPhone has always been weird, but it's only going to get weirder. And as exciting as this new policy is, I want to make sure we properly understand it. If you're looking for a short video quickly explaining Apple's changes here, you've come to the wrong place. We're going to dive in deep, figuring out what led us here, what we can expect, and why is Apple making these changes in the first place? So, uh, Without further ado, let's dive in. My main source for a lot of this is going to be Ars Technica. I trust them dearly. Them and Anon Tech are like my go-to news tech sources. And basically anything they say is probably at the very, very least well-sourced. So check out the link in the description if you're looking for more information. Before we do that, though, I want to actually go over the policy itself. The recent change is this 4.7 callout. Mini apps, mini games, streaming games, chatbots, plugins, and game emulators. Apps may offer certain software that is not embedded in the binary. If you're not a software developer, what this means is that imagine when you bought an Xbox or a PlayStation, it came with games already installed on it. You could obviously go buy new games or download new games from the internet, but the embedded bit is that it's already there on the system. Kind of like how when you buy a new Windows computer and it comes with, I don't know, Candy Crush on it. In the App Store, the expectation is that that thing that you got initially has everything you're expecting to use in it. A slightly better example might be if you install a game that has a bunch of mini games inside of it and you turn off your internet, you go to play one of the games and it says, hey, sorry, we need to get more information in order to download this. Or if you've ever installed a big game on your phone where the game itself is small, but then it has to go download like two to 10 gigs of additional data once you've installed it. Those are all things that aren't embedded in the binary. The actual thing that your device came with, or in this case, the app that you installed, doesn't have the things it needs to run because you have multiple additional games. The reason Apple's been really strict about this historically is that they're trying to avoid additional app stores being introduced. Imagine an app that's like a mini store full of mini games and you could just download individual games inside of the app itself. Obviously, those wouldn't appear on your home screen like other apps, but maybe you just have a collection of like 20 games and you keep adding them in your phone. Apple sees that as competition to the app store and they've been really strict about that historically, where you cannot have an app where you download additional parts from the internet and have it behave differently. They're easing this up for games, which makes a lot of sense, both because of the legislation that's been filed against them in the EU as well as the US, in combination with the expectation that users have now that they can have multiple mini games inside of their app. Look at something like iMessage where you can install mini games within it or the way that Facebook Messenger used to work with a little basketball game that got banned. Thankfully, they're changing the rules here. One specific part they called out though that I think is really important is HTML5 mini apps and mini games. HTML5 is a general term for the new era of the web, which is how most modern web games and things are made. It's also where Flash died. HTML5 was historically Apple's way of skirting around expectations that developers had. Previously, when you were installing apps on your phone, well, you couldn't because the iPhone didn't ship with an app store. So when developers wanted to make apps for the original iPhone, they were told to make websites instead using this HTML5 tech. And it is kind of funny how we've wrapped all the way back to doing that again as Apple's official recommendation for how to make mini games in your applications. So you're making a messenger app and you want to have a little mini game inside. You can't use native code or anything native that your phone has. You couldn't use a real game engine or something like that. It has to work through a browser and like a mini web embed in the app. Very interesting call out. They also call out streaming games, which is interesting. If you've watched any of my other Apple coverage, you know this is a point that I've been very upset about in that Apple decided they didn't like streaming games because they considered that as well as like another app store experience, even though streaming movies, streaming music, all those things they were cool with. So finally, unbanning game streaming from the app store is huge. And I'm really excited to see what both NVIDIA and Xbox do with that. Chatbots is an interesting thing to call out here. I, uh, this is some weird AI call out because that stuff doesn't run on the phone. I don't know if it was banned before, but they're calling it out here. And plugins, also vague, but uh, happy they're calling out that these things can all be done remotely and downloaded later on. This is where things get interesting, though, the reason you're watching. Additionally, retro game console emulator apps can offer to download games. This is the call out everyone's really excited about because previously retro console game emulators weren't really touched on too much in the rules. Like they just were blanket understood to not really be allowed, especially since you had to get actual software from other places to play on them. Like you can't download an emulator and then not have a way to get a game. Even with Apple's introducing a file system, the relationship the file system had with apps made it really hard to, to do emulation the right way without breaking other Apple rules. And on top of that, Apple kind of just skirted away from emulators and would ban them. A couple of people tried to work around that, especially back in like 2013. There was an app called My Stash that was meant to be like fake mustache generator that had a hidden set of Nintendo emulators in it, specifically NES, SNES, and Game Boy. There was also an iPhone app called Baby Name Generator, if I recall. Sorry, Awesome Baby Names. 
that was a fake baby name app. And you could do this certain set of motions to then get it into a Game Boy emulator mode, load a binary, load the BIOS, and then get going. You wouldn't need to be jailbroken. Both of these apps were banned from the App Store very, very quickly because they did not want to deal with both the wrath of Nintendo as well as the chaos of introducing these new things that were against their policy. Here's where stuff gets a little more interesting though. You are responsible for all such software offered in your app, including ensuring that such software complies with these guidelines and all applicable laws. This is where your expectations for a Game Boy emulator that has all the games kind of go to die. And this is where things are going to start getting interesting. Because if Nintendo can even make a vague case that something they see on the App Store is against the law, Apple's not going to screw around. They're just going to ban it immediately. They don't, they don't want to be part of that conversation. They just want it gone. Is this kind of allowing more? Yes, but we'll see just what. My expectation for what they're going for here is that companies like Sega that might not even make consoles anymore that just want to take old games from like the Dreamcast and make them playable on your phone could have a little app that has all your Dreamcast games you could go and re-download and buy in an app that will emulate them. This will also make those little mini controllers you put around your phone much more compelling. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what companies do with this, but I don't think individuals making emulators is the, the goal here. As you can always expect with Apple, if they're in-app purchases, they have to be done through Apple's in-app purchase platform so they can make their 30%. Obviously, that's going to be called out here. That's just their way of doing things. But I want to go back to this article quick. As Ars Technica says, these changes are probably not the wild west of game emulators that we're hoping for. Here's why. When Apple posted its latest update to the App Store's app review and submission policies for devs, it includes language that appears to explicitly allow a new type of app for emulating retro console games. Apple's long forbidden apps that run code from external sources, but today's announcement changes that, now allowing for software that is not embedded in the binary in certain cases, with retro game console emulator apps can offer downloading games specifically as one of those examples. It's a little fuzzy how this will play out, but it may not allow the kind of emulators you see on Android as well as on desktop, which lets you play retro games from any outside source. This isn't saying that it's not technically possible. In fact, you can do this right now. One of the coolest things available on iOS is a thing called Alt Store. It sucks that this has to exist, but it, it does. Allstar was created as an open source method for installing whatever apps you want on your phone using a developer license. Because as a developer, you need to be able to install things on your phone when you're working on them. This is kind of hacking around that requirement in order to allow anyone to quickly install things on their iPhone. It's still a bit of work to get it set up and working correctly. You have to re-authenticate every two weeks to confirm that you're still a developer so the apps keep working. It's not meant to work like normal apps. And it's clear that this is not something that is well blessed by Apple and even particularly well supported. But it works as a method to get apps that Apple doesn't allow. Things like Dolphin, which is a GameCube and Wii emulator. The alt store is obviously all open source because it has to be because you're installing it onto your phone in Xcode yourself. But you can use this and you can use the alt store App Store, which has a bunch of different apps, most of which are emulators like Dolphin or Provenance or uh, the Java Launcher, which is Minecraft Java Edition Launcher for iOS. Really cool stuff. I know I've put a lot of time into Delta, which is the DS emulator that you can install using this. So you can just install traditional emulators on an iPhone and have them work. The thing that I'm not expecting is for these to now be allowed as installable apps from the App Store. I'd be very, very surprised if Apple lets Delta on. Retro game emulators run what are colloquially called ROM files, which are more or less images of the game cartridges or discs that played on console hardware. Very important point here. When you download a ROM, it's the equivalent of like the disc that you would put into the console before. And in order for a ROM to be playable, you have to have a system that allows you to load that external code and then execute it. That's the point. It's like a mini app inside of an app. You're basically buying an app on a disc and putting it in your console or a cartridge that has an app on it and running it on your your system that was entirely banned before now apple's loosening up the ability to in-app download those things but can you sideload could i have a folder that's already on my phone and load content from that that's unclear from these rules and generally speaking with apple rules if it's unclear you're not allowed to do it so here it says retro game console emulators can offer to download games and all of the such software has to be comply with the apple guidelines which means all of the things that can be installed in the app through these downloads which in this case is the emulator have to be things that are available in the app store app that you downloaded so you have to be able to get any Anything you want to get without leaving. That's my interpretation of this. If you have to go somewhere else to get the file and then load a file that isn't part of the app itself in, I don't think Apple's going to allow that and nothing in this wording suggests they will. If I was Sega and I made 20 games available for download in my app, 
that would be allowed. But that 21st app that you're downloading from a third party or that 21st ROM file you just have in your system, that's what I don't think will be allowed through here. By now, it's well established that the emulators themselves are completely legal. Oof, I wish that was the case. The court case that we keep citing for that is old enough that we don't know for sure. Check out my video about the Yuzu stuff if you want to know more about that, because as much as we all like to think this, I I don't think it's fair to say so boldly that emulators are well established to be completely legal. There are too many edge cases around it for us to say that confidently. But the legality of ROM files downloaded from ROM sites on the internet depends on the specific file and circumstances. Ugh, again, usually it's going to be illegal when you're just downloading ROMs from the internet. I am a big fan of it for preservation purposes, and I love groups like the Internet Archive doing such good work preserving ROMs for systems that have been long since left behind. The fact that I'll be able to show my kids my Game Boy games someday reliably on a computer is a huge, huge thing, and I don't want to discredit that. But the legality is very much in question. I do not love this sentence. There are ROMs that are entirely public domain or in some license where the creator allows distribution. Yes, but these are very rare. Very rare. Then there are ROMs that are technically copyrighted intellectual property, but where the original owner no longer exists, and the current ownership is unknown or unenforced. Yes, and for preservation purposes, making sure these are accessible is great, but we have to recognize that it's not fully legal. There's also some ROMs, like many games made by Nintendo, where the owner still has an interest in controlling distribution and often takes action to try and curb illegal sharing and use of those files. Absolutely. And if you have an app that lets you play these files, they're going to go to Apple and say, hey, don't do that, and Apple's going to comply because that's what they do. Additionally, many game publishers use emulators to run ROMs of their own retro games, which they sell to consumers either as standalone games or in collections for modern platforms. This is the thing that I've been hinting at. What I would expect is for them to have their own mini apps where you can download a bunch of Sega games or old Nintendo games if they decide to do something like this. That's what this is for, is for companies that made these retro games or game emulation systems because they made the original system and they want to make an app experience for people to download things from their old favorite consoles. Like a Game Boy app by Nintendo is totally viable here. A Game Boy app by a random dev where you're loading files from your file system, much less so. It's not completely clear from Apple's wording, but our interpretation of Apple's new rules is that as likely only the last of those examples will be possible. Companies that own the intellectual property could launch emulator apps for downloading ROMs of their own and of their only of their own games. Yes. This is what I was thinking this whole time. <laughs> Don't tell me they actually used the Sega example too. That's hilarious. I swore I didn't or I swear I didn't pre-read this. I just grabbed all my sources ahead of time. But that is really funny that Sega is going to be the only example we use because Sega is the one game console manufacturer that died and had anything of interest. We could use the example of Atari, but Atari died even harder and historically had basically no good games. This is the same quote that I was calling out from the new policy before where you're responsible for all such software offered in your app. This is important because if you don't literally own the rights to all that software, you probably can't offer it. And if it's not in the app for download, then it can't be played. So you can't load files from other places. This one piece almost immediately kills the likelihood we get a traditional emulator in an app on the iPhone. And we'll probably have to continue relying on things like our friends over at Alt Store. I also love that they call out the reason that they're doing this. My gut feel here is that one of the reasons people would go to third party app stores is for emulators like this. And in order to keep people from doing that, they're adding more rules for this in the app store itself. The other reason that I think is much bigger, unlike what they're calling out here, is the simple nature of how Apple's getting screwed for not allowing for code to be fetched, so to speak. There are a bunch of categories that they've arbitrarily restricted from existing on the iPhone because of these rules. Things like the game streaming that I mentioned before, things like mini game collections, things like mini little games that are built into your messaging apps. They just decided this shouldn't be allowed and they didn't really justify why they just did it. And rather than continue to eat shit in the courts from both the EU and the US, they've decided to make this policy change and enable some new things to exist, largely so they have more things to point at in these court cases, being like, no, we actually changed that policy. Look at these apps that exist now. See, we're the good guys. So that's my gut feel for why they're doing these things. And also, of course, they want their 30%. If these things are done in other app stores in ways that they can't collect their percentages, they're not going to be very happy. So in those senses, I understand what their goals are here. That's all I have to say on this one. I just wanted to jump in front of the misinfo that Apple's magically suddenly allowing any emulator to exist on the iPhone because that is not what's happening here. So I uh, hope this helps clarify things. And until next time, go check out my other Apple videos and uh, peace nerds.